Hello. Hi. Hi, little creatures. Welcome to Lugal's world. We have down the wombat holes, Isaac. Go subscribe to his channel and book a session with him, an astrology session. Let all those burning questions be answered by him. Support his work. We great to see him doing full time astrology and really adding so much value to the the mystical, magical community and the spiritual community, as well as you can book a session with me today. We're doing a beautiful series. We're planning to go through uh, as far as we feel like it as, as the tarot cards, and we're going to be associating them with astrology. And today we're looking at the the magus or the magician here. We're going to be deep diving into the astrological association with this. So Isaac, tell us about the astrological association of this card. Yes. So we last time we talked about the fool and we can understand the magician as a maybe a more conscious manifestation of this sort of trickster energy. So the fool sort of stumbles through life a bit more. Um, going through that fool's journey archetype, whereas the magician has started to harness harness this this power, this this sort of um, this joker trickster energy, and using it a bit more purposely and actively as well. Um, yeah, so the most obvious um, archetypal link, say to um, astrology, astrotheology, is to Mercury and also Hermes. Um, there's we really see that this yeah this archetype coming through fairly strongly um if we think about mercury from a astrological point of view it, it is about taking you know it mercury sort of it's um linked to information sharing communication um trade business because it's an intermediary it's very quick you know it's sort of clever um very flexible adaptable so it goes between but it's it's a, it's a link or it sort of serves to to sort of um bring things which might be at polarity um, and not necessarily um, joined and Mercury can create that link. And so that's why it's associated with Gemini because Gemini is all about socially social interactions, communicating, expressing, thinking, thoughts, being competitive. Um, and so with, uh, with the magician, or uh, it's, it's um, this link between the intangible and the tangible or the spiritual and the and the and the material you, you might say as well so it's taking things which uh might be esoteric occulted um slightly mystic to, in its extent and then transferring that or um channeling that into material form and that could just be in the form of you know just just words um written verbal um in, information again com uh, communication and that you know you can see that that process as you know fundamental to what magic is it's taking something that we can't see that exists in a different realm and bringing it in, into material form and we and we see that as an act of magic because it challenges our senses it challenges what we know um, about how the material world works um you know so just si simply uh c communicating complex ideas or communicating or articulating very complex esoteric ideas into easily understandable forms you know that's magic that's what the magus does um and bringing about material changes in the world based on spiritual concepts you know that is magic um and i think we, we can see that you know see it in in in, in the card in terms of the illustrations you know with uh, with the uh, with the hands sort of creating this link between heaven and, and earth as well so yeah, I think that's a really core um, foundation to uh, understand this um, this tarot archetype, and particularly what um, the Thoth deck was trying to get get across as well. Um, we can also look at look at the magician in terms of a polarity to the high priestess as well, um, and that's a bit of a we always get a bit of a Mars Venus dynamic there as well. Maybe um, the priestess more just um the the uh the passive interaction with this with this greater force um you know de uh, beauty desire romance love you know just being in it and not necessarily you know controlling it or refining it or um focusing it whereas the magician is more active in how in how that is used and you know we have that sort of 
Venus passive, Mars active dynamic going on there. So there's a bit of a polarity between those two um, archetypes as well that we see coming through. Um, yeah, and I guess in terms of um, the houses, so this this idea of bringing spiritual concepts into the material or the tangible that's that's sort of the, that's the ninth house third house axis in in the zodiac or in the houses which also relates to sagittarius um and and gemini so that's really this sort of we look at that axis as this channel um from the spiritual into the material so ninth house uh is about what's foreign what expands our horizons what increases our understanding um things like spirituality religion overseas travel things which are exotic things that which are foreign whereas the third house you know and also mercury gemini you know is about making things you know keeping things like lo local what can we learn about the world and ourselves just from in interacting in everyday environments going to the post office playing sport going to school talking with with neighbors so i think we can see that role of the, the magician sort of almost um yeah, falling within this this ninth, third, ninth Sagittarius Jet Gemini axis in astrology as well. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives a bit of a, a um, core understanding about what what this card represents. Do you have anything to um, to add to that? Say so it also has the. You can also associate it with the uh, Sun and Mercury in Aries being like uh, number one. And bringing that, um, bringing that power, that masculine, that masculine force into the world, and re and really using that first initial uh, energy that just sitting there, the energy of Gether, Gether. Also, uh, you can think of uh, bisexuality, ambidextrousness, flirtiness. Uh, it's got an exasperating energy, stirring up the pot. You know, God's, just, God's yeah. sitting around, just being God, chilling. And then here comes the magician stirring up the pot. I'm going to do something with this. You know, we got to just stop sitting around being yogis. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, it, exasperating is a, a fun word. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, and the card yeah. adapt. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Yeah, that, that I think we really, really dug, dug into it nicer then, didn't we? Congratulations, little creatures. You made it through the video. Please like, please subscribe, please share all of the love and all of your money. Just kidding, some of your money <laughs> and support what we're doing. And we would love to produce even more content for you. Uh, let us know what you think, what you'd like us to do videos on, um, your thoughts on the card. Uh, I, we really appreciate your your support. We really appreciate you uh, spending your attention on us. Uh, go check out the uh, Down the Wombat Hole channel. I have some. I have a new video that's on there. That's on the Saturn uh, Mercury Kazemi that's coming up on the 28th. You're not going to want to miss that. Um, everyone have a beautiful night or day. Peace.